Hey guys, Mr. Kevin here, and welcome to our STEM DIY project. Um, if you've seen my weather uh, lesson already, that's cool, you'll be good to go. If not, we'll refresh a little bit. Um, so materials that we're going to need for today's project are a empty two liter soda, bottle of soda. We're gonna need some rocks or pebbles some type of measuring device, whether it's a ruler or this. Um, we are going to need scissors, a permanent marker, duct tape or paper clips, whatever you prefer, and a notebook or a journal. So pause here if you need to gather those items. I'll say them one more time. You're going to need this journal, tape or paper clips, scissors, a permanent marker, a measuring device that has inches, that's what we're looking for, some rocks or pebbles, and an empty soda bottle, preferably two liters. So pause here to gather those things. Once you have them, come on back. So here's a little refresher. We're talking about weather. What is weather? Weather is what's happening in the Earth at the Earth's atmosphere at any given time. We're going to focus on one type of weather storm today, and that is rain. And what is rain? Well, rain is water that falls from the sky. But what is it falling from? Well, clouds. And clouds are made up of little droplets of rain, and it's in the gaseous form. So let's talk about that first. There are three states that water can be in, and other things. Um, but water in liquid state is what we call water. That's rain. We see that rain. We drink the water. A solid state is ice, so where it becomes hard, or snow. Snow is simply, when rain falls, it freezes in the air to become a solid. And then gaseous state, it could be steam, fog, and a cloud. So now we're going to watch a video about weather. If you already saw my weather STEM session, it's the same video. You can skip ahead or watch again. And for your first time comers, watch this video. We'll be right back. Welcome to 3 2 Wonder. I'm Dr. Jeff, and today I'm gonna make a cloud. Wow, that was awesome. And today we're gonna be exploring weather. Here we go. Today we'll learn that weather tells us what the sky and air around us are like on any given day. It can be sunny. Windy, cloudy, rainy, snowy, or stormy. And scientists can predict the weather by understanding patterns. Three, two, one, two! Addison, we can't understand you with that scarf over your mouth. Oh, sorry. I said hi, Dr. Jeff. Hi, EJ. Oh, oh hi. hi. I wish it wasn't so cold and windy today. Now I can't do my daily routine of running five miles. But you've never ran five miles before. I know. I was going to start today. That coldness outside is called the weather. Weather tells us what the atmosphere is like on any given day. What's the atmosphere? What? I said, what's the atmosphere? Ah, the atmosphere is all the sky and air around us. I see. So today the weather outside is cold and windy. 
That's right. Now, let's explore each type of weather one by one. It's time to go into our imaginations. Follow me! Ready? Here we go! In three, three two, two, one, there! I love my imagination. I love it too because this is sunny weather. My favorite. Me too. Now, we learned before the sun makes light. It shines on the earth during the day and warms up everything around us. Sunny weather is when the sun shines brightly. On some days, it's hard to see the sun when it's hidden behind clouds. Yep, what you're describing is cloudy weather. Clouds are made up of teeny tiny water droplets. They're so small, they can actually float in the air. When clouds block some light from the sun, we say the weather is cloudy. I'm getting sad just looking at that. To help us understand cloudy weather, we're gonna make our very own cloud. To do that, we need some safety equipment. Here you go. Now, don't try this at home. This bin is filled with a very, very cold liquid. It's called liquid nitrogen. So cold, I have to wear special gloves. When we mix in this water, it should make tiny, tiny droplets of water, just like a cloud. Let's count it down. In three, two, wonder! Whoa! It's like being inside a cloud. Ready to move on to windy weather? Yeah! Wind is when air around us moves. Wind can bend trees, blow papers from your hands, and it can even make clouds move. But I don't understand. Why don't we see the wind? That's a good question, Addison. Even though we can see the air, it's a gas that's all around us. Let me show you. What just happened? The air takes up all the space in the balloon. Exactly. Air is all around us. Let's see what happens when air moves fast. Oops. Brace yourselves. Yep, just like wind can do outside on a windy day. Now it's time to explore rainy weather. You couldn't do this before we lost our umbrellas? Sorry. Rain is when drops of water fall from clouds in the sky. Sometimes it rains a little bit, and other times it rains a lot. I love the rain. It makes everything feel clean and fresh. Rain is very important. It keeps trees and plants alive and provides people with fresh water that we can drink. But too much rain isn't always a good thing either. That's true, EJ. Too much rainy weather can sometimes lead to flooding or mudslides. What happens to rain when it's really cold? Let's find out. I wish I hadn't asked that question. Ooh. This is snowy weather. 
<laughs> Remember that water can exist either as a liquid or a solid, which is ice. That's right. Snow happens when rain freezes into a solid as it's falling down. Snow is made of frozen water. Dr. Jeff, can we see some weather a little less freezing? Of course. Finally, some nice, calm weather. Welcome to a thunderstorm! Thunderstorms are when big clouds make thunder and lightning, and usually a lot of rain too. Lightning is a bright flash of light in the sky. And thunder is the loud sound caused by lightning. Extreme weather like this should always be taken seriously to keep people safe Scientists have learned how to predict storms before they happen. These experts are constantly studying the weather all around the country to detect patterns. By looking at weather patterns from the past, scientists can predict the direction that a storm will move across the country. For instance, from west to east. So scientists study all the different types of weather to find patterns. And they can use those patterns to make predictions about the kind of weather coming our way. That's exactly right. Great job. Now it's time to do it yourself. Today we're going to make your very own rain gauge. You'll need a large soda bottle, scissors, sand or pebbles, a ruler, a permanent marker, and paper clips. First, have an adult help you cut off the top of the bottle. Then fill up the bottom part with pebbles so that it is flat and won't fall over. Next, use a ruler to mark the side of the bottle with dashes every inch or centimeter. Your choice. Put the part of the bottle you cut off in the opening like this and hold it in place with four paper clips. To use the rain gauge, just put it outside and measure how much rainwater it collects after a storm. Notice how some storms dump a lot of water and other storms only a little. A rain gauge is just one tool that scientists use to understand and predict the weather. Try it yourself! Let's review. Today, we learned that weather is what's happening in the Earth's atmosphere on any given day. It can be sunny, windy, cloudy, rainy, snowing, or stormy. And scientists can predict the weather by understanding patterns. And now you know. Until next time, I'm Dr. Jeff. I'm AJ. I'm Addison. And remember, always, always question, question, always wonder. wonder. So now that we have watched a video, 
We saw the kids in the video make a rain gauge, and that's what we're going to do today. So first things first is we're going to take this empty soda bottle and make sure that we cleaned it out. We're going to unscrew the top, and we're going to put a little bit of soap in there and water. Give it a little sh shake and empty it out. You're going to have to probably rinse it like two or three times to get all the soap out. Once you do that, we're going to cut off the label. So you're going to want to take your scissors with your parents' help and squeeze the bottom just so you can get the little lip under there and cut. Once you do that, we're going to take the label off. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There are going to be little glue spots on there or little pieces. But clean it up the best you can. Okay, so you should have a bottle. Mine's a little wrinkly, sorry. An empty bottle. So, with this bottle, we are going to squeeze this down a little bit, flatten it out. And you really want to make sure, so it's a little bit flat, make sure this piece right here, where it starts to bend, is really flat. So this might be a little tough, so please ask an adult or your parents to help you cut this. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut straight across here, like so. Be careful not to cut yourself with the scissors or the sharp edges of here. So now we should have two pieces. Once you've cut them all, we're going to kind of reshape this back to what it should look like. Air out the water. You can get a little paper towel and clean it up in there, dry it up. I'm just going to use my sleeve because I'm not near a paper towel. So we're going to make sure it's that. For right now, just put the lid back on so we don't lose it. Make sure it's good and like its original shape. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom half. Make sure you get it in a good shape again. And we're going to dry it out. You could use a paper towel. It's just water. If you want to use your sleeve, it's fine. That's what I'm doing. Make sure you get all the ridges. Once it is dry, it should look like this. Any questions so far? If not, you can always rewind to get anything that you may have missed out on. So now, what we want is we're going to fill this up. You'll see like the first lip. We're going to try to fill that up with as many pebbles as we can to reach the top lip. You should just see like a little, I don't think you can see there, oh, a little bit you can. Um, you'll see like a little divot right there. We're going to fill it up to there. So take your pebbles or stones or whatever's heavy that this won't blow away in the wind because when there's a storm, sometimes there's wind and it might knock this down. So we're going to pour our rocks in there. A little bit more. So I have my rocks in the bottom. I'm going to like weigh it a little bit just to make sure that if I do this, it's not going to tip. It's not going to blow over in the wind. And it's just about to that little seam that you'll see. There's like a little indentation you'll see. So from here, I'm going to grab my tape measure, or if you have a roller, that is fine as well. And from, you'll see like this little divot. This is called a little punt. Um, right here at the tip of the punt, um, we're going to top put our ruler like so. So we want the one down at the little tip, this little divot right here. This is a really long tape, so. <laughs> Once you have it, we're going to take our permanent marker and mark off 
every inch going to the top. So I'm going to do a big line for every inch. Make sure you guys can see that. And then every half an inch, I'm going to do a smaller line. So you'll see the little half inch is right between the one and two, and the two and three, and the three and four, and the four and five, and the five and six, and I'm going to hit the top to seven. So then I could remove, and I'm going to write, so we have that, remember the big lines are every inch, put it this way so you can see better, are every inch, and the little lines are half an inch. So I'm going to number them up, going up, starting with one at the bottom. I'm going to write one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got six inches, and the very top will be seven. Um, there's no line there. You don't have to write the seven. So we have that. just put my lid back on. So now we can put this aside for a little bit. Now what we want to do is grab this piece right here. We're going to take the cap off and we could throw this cap out. Actually we're going to recycle this cap because it is plastic. We're going to place this inside the tube with the top facing down, like so. And if you have paper clips, you're going to want to paper clip the edges to the rain gauge, like that. But I'm going to be using tape just to create a seal. So, let me get started. I'm going to pull off a piece of tape first. I have very thick duct tape. It's easier if you just take this first and place it already in there, just about half of it. And then stick this in to where the edges meet, where the edges meet, and fold it over. And we're going to do that a couple times until this is completely around the top. This way it creates a seal and it could funnel the water. I'm going to do one there. We're going to go all the way across. I don't want to cover my numbers. So I will do it here. Yeah, make sure you don't cover the numbers. I'm going to skip that section where the numbers are. No tape is going to be needed there because I'm taping everything else. It doesn't have to be all the way around. You can tape all the way around if you like. I'm just going to put one more piece of tape here. And that will complete that for me. Ooh, that's getting a little wobbly. Okay. So once this is taped, you can see the spout is in the inside. The rocks are on the bottom. We have our number. So this is our rain gauge. So what's going to happen is we're going to stick this outside. We're going to place it on the ground. And when it rains, the rain is going to come and fall into here and funnel, because we made like a little funnel inside, funnel, funnel down and fill up. Then this is where we're going to get our journal. I'm going to put this aside for right now. Over here. So you can grab a notebook, a journal, a diary, whatever you like. So this is my weather journal. We're going to open it up. And I labeled mine, my rainfall journal. So after every rain, we want to take data.
from what the rain gauge has collected. So we're going to write a date, a time, and the amount. This way we're keeping Dally notes on how much rain falls. So you're going to want to go outside once the rain has stopped. Once the rain has stopped, sorry, my things are falling. <laughs> once the rain has stopped, we're going to go outside. We're going to write the date. So let's pretend that it's raining outside and my rain gauge is already outside. So today is 421, 421, 20, 20. So we're going to write today's date, 421, 2020, and the time, it's about 1.30. Pretend the rain stopped at 1.30. I'm going to write 1.30 p.m. Then I'm going to see where the water level is. So pretend my arm is the water. Um, so where does the water read? So according to the rain gauge, if we're pretending my arm is water, it says two inches. So we'll read that, and the amount that it's fall, right here in the amount section, we're going to write two inches. So that would be our first reading. And then you can keep doing this uh, every time it rains for how long you guys want um, this project. Um, but after every storm, we're going to make sure that we empty the water. Um, you can do so by turning it upside down and letting the water out because the rocks won't the rocks won't fall out because maybe one or two might fall through the little hole, but not the majority of them. Or you can take the lid out and dump and then retape it. I prefer just turning it upside down and letting all the water out. This way, for the next storm, you're ready to get a new measurement. And then we'll log that storm into our journal. You do this how long you want and collect that data once you have all that data and it will tell you how many days a year it rained. You can make a little chart, whatever you like. I hope you enjoyed this activity guys. See you later. Bye.